Today, we are going to look at some real game-changing technology from PTC and ANSYS, Creo Simulation Live, and look at the extended value it brings to a product development process. I am sure you can relate to some or all of the challenges listed here. In today's competitive landscape, ensuring your products perform better than others in the same space is more important than ever. We are all asked to develop things quicker, cheaper and of higher quality. Analysis plays an important part in achieving this by reducing the number of physical prototypes required, getting closer to right first time every time and reducing warranty costs and exposure. Let's take a look at a typical product development process and where we might be able to make some real improvements. For many years, industry has tried to consistently use simulation as a part of the development process for all the reasons we reviewed on the previous slide. Unfortunately, the fact remains that when simulation is used as part of the process, it's used exactly as you see it here, almost as a final validation step after the design is practically complete. That's not exactly the vision of simulation-driven design that the industry has been striving to achieve for years. So why is this? What are the barriers to simulation being used every day throughout the development process by your everyday design engineer? Often, engineers feel like they don't have the expertise they need to run simulations while they design. They feel like they need to consult an expert who they might not even have ready access to. Often, that expert's initial task is to figure out how to simplify a copy of the model so that the simulation will run in a reasonable time, but still provide an actionable answer. Engineers don't feel comfortable making that judgment. Additionally, the design process is an iterative one. The design engineer would want to use simulation as he or she evolves the design through all of these iterations, but this world would require running a simulation that could take hours on multiple uniquely simplified copies over and over again. It's just not efficient, it's too disruptive to the design process, and so design engineers generally just don't do it. This is the reason PTC have entered into partnership with ANSYS. The goal is to remove these barriers for product development teams. It brings together two leaders in their respective fields and delivering a single solution for our customers. It's game changing and is going to remove all the problems we've just referred to. So what product development teams really need is a simulation tool that is so fast, so responsive, so simple to use that it can literally keep up with the design engineer every step of the way. No copies, no waiting, just simulation results right there throughout. Creos Simulation Live is the solution that will give every design engineer what they need to truly achieve simulation-driven design. The ability to instantaneously understand how a design change impacts product performance is truly groundbreaking and only available with the solution that PTC have brought to the market in Creo. It uses a unique technology approach to deliver simulation results interactively as you design. This solution is intended to complement existing simulation offerings that focus more on the analyses that require higher levels of fidelity or are used as a final validation step. This is represented in this graphic by PTC's Creo Simulation extension, but it could just as easily be an ANSYS offering. Creo Simulation Live gives you the ability to do static, structural, thermal and modal analyses in real time with instant feedback live on screen so the engineer can make better decisions, identify design flaws earlier in the process and optimise the design on the fly. This in turn reduces the reliance on physical prototypes and mitigates against the risk of product failure. Now let's see Creo Simulate Live in action. Here's a small analysis of, uh, of a ski tip that I've been working on. And I'm sort of early in the design process here and I'm trying to develop a concept where this t ski tip is, is flexible in a certain amount, but not too flexible. Um, and I've got this idea that I'll use a lattice in order to you know, remove some of the material, but uh, also use the lattice to, to control the stiffness. And this is a perfect example of where Creo Simulation Live can come in and help us provide design guidance and, in, and, and feedback um, for this. And it's perfect for this because it exists right inside the design environment that I'm, I'm using uh, to create this model. So I just move over to the Simulation Live tab and start my analysis. What I'm going to do is set up a, a simple test case where 
I put some force up under the uh, up under the ski tip, and as soon as I've done that, I've actually can start the analysis and get instant feedback about the deformation of say 1.9 or you know some kind of uh, deformation that I'm going up in there. So let's have a look at the uh, an animation of the displacement. Yeah, that looks reasonable. The first thing you always want to do is make sure that the results look reasonable because you can use a lot of your engineering intuition and design intuition uh, to make sure that you haven't put loads in the wrong direction or constrained it in, in an unexpected way. Um, we then might want to look at the stresses and uh, these stresses are pretty low at this moment. Um, so we can probably start pulling some material out or doing something else um, to, you know, to meet our design goals. And the good thing is, is that because we are already in the design environment, I can start to play with things such as the cell lattice um, thickness. Maybe I'll make that a little bit thinner now. And you'll see that as after the regeneration occurs um, for that lattice, we attach it in the results will already be updated for me. So now I can see here, uh, you know, we've increased the stresses a little bit, um, but not too much. But we might want to look at the displacements again. Um, you know, the displacements now, it's gone, you know, 2.6 millimeters. So we've made it, you know, like a, you know, some percentage, um, 30, 40% less stiff. But as a designer, now we can play these games about, well, what can we change? What if we change that? Why don't we, um, why don't we change something else? In fact, I've just had this idea that if I fill in some of these holes, I can make this a little bit stiffer in here, but without affecting what's going on um, down in some of the area, uh, other areas of the model. So I'm going to resume, uh, actually I'll just go back to this um, part of the model here and I'm going to resume a bunch of features that I had created previously and you see here that I've actually created a way of, of filling in the holes. Um, so we've got our deformation back to 1.8 now. Um, maybe that's, uh, maybe I want to get it a little bit closer to 2. So I'm going to kind of interactively drag this feature up a little bit, not fill in so many holes, regenerate it, um, and let the model, uh, yeah, it's getting pretty close there. Maybe I took too many, uh, too many of those fill-ins away. But I think you can get the point where Creo Simulation Live is really just part of your design environment it allows you to keep thinking as a designer would think. What if I change that? Is this geometry what I want to see? All of these parts of the thought process are permanently there and you don't have to think about meshes or convergence or algorithms or different types of elements or all of those different things uh, which only take away from your, um, the mind space or the amount of uh, bandwidth you've got in your mind to think about um, analysis tasks. But of course, the analysis is always running uh, and you can come back at any time to evaluate you know, what the stresses are at this point. Maybe we want to um, play with the, the legend a little bit uh, interactively to, to make it sort of more obvious about where those high stress points are. Um, the Creo Simulation Live environment is extremely interactive, um, very, very easy to use, extremely easy to learn um, as you see from uh, the menus are very, very obvious. Um, if you can use Creo, you can use Creo Simulation Live. Got an interesting little design problem I want to solve here. I have this engine, engine design, and this valve cover, um, the engineering team want to change it from the current alloy uh, casting to a modern sort of plastic um, design. So they've asked me to look at the feasibility of that and see if there's going to be any issues with sort of a structural or, or sort of vibration performance. Um, so I thought this might be a good example um, to show how Creo Simulation Live might be used as part of this process.
So what I'll do is I'll, I'll open this part up and you'll see that uh, you know it's, uh, it's designed in such a way for, for a casting. And what I might want to do is just baseline the current, um, the current analysis or the current design. So as I said, it's made out of uh, aluminium. And what I'll do is a modal analysis and maybe just sort of fix uh, the face where the gasket surface would be um, and it's, uh, as it's bolted down into the car. And at that point, or at this point, I can already do um, an analysis and get sort of like a baseline level of, uh, of the first mode natural frequency, um, 900 hertz. So it's, it'll look something like this. And the natural frequency of a part always gives us an idea of, you know, the stiffness, how it, um, and also how it sort of wants to vibrate in, in certain ways. Anyway, but the stiffness value can kind of be set there. So what I might want to do now instead is compare it to if I use some sort of plastic, like an ABS plastic. Um, let's just assign that over that material to the part, and instantly the analysis is updated for me. And you'll see that the uh, the value of the first frequency is now down at 300 hertz, and this is a little bit problematic. Um, I'm told uh, we're going to try and avoid 300 hertz if at all possible. So what I can now do is have a look at what sorts of design um, tricks I can play uh, to try and either modify this existing design because I don't really want to have to design the whole thing again from scratch. So perhaps one thing I can do is to put a rib at this top here because I could see that it was breathing, kind of splitting apart. So if I think if I put a rib in there somewhere then maybe um, maybe that would be appropriate. So I'll, I'll just use my standard modeling techniques, uh, put a center line somewhere through like this and you know I, I'm, I'm just thinking of all the different ways that I can possibly uh, address this problem and you know maybe I'll just uh, do a, a simple a simple rib this way maybe make it a little less dished and you can see it's very quick to add that rib maybe I'll make it about uh, about five millimeters thick something like that and as soon as I regenerate the model uh, you'll, you'll see that the uh, the simulation results is already giving me indication that we've gone from 300 hertz up to 300 and nearly 50 hertz, which is g going in the right direction. So I know that this method uh, of adding ribs um, might be uh, might be a, a good way to address my design problem. And you can see that the value of having the simulation results absolutely in r real time as I'm doing these design decisions um, is well, it's in, it's incredibly valuable. It's a real change um, way to change the design process for the better. Um, in fact, I'll just do one more change down here and resume a couple of ribs that I had put in earlier, and you'll see that you know I'm able to uh, able to bump that value of uh, frequency up to nearly 380 hertz now away from its original value which was you know something like uh, what did we say about 300 hertz so I've made you know good improvements um, by doing these kinds of real-time studies um, for the vibration uh, right inside my design environment of Creo and that is the value of Creo Simulation Live as we have just seen, Creo Simulation Live is fast, easy to use and interactive. The business benefits are many. Life cycle costs are reduced due to fewer product failures and reduced warranty and repair costs. Time to market is reduced by enabling the engineer to rapidly explore and find the optimum design. Product quality is improved, which brings competitive differentiation along with the increased performance. Overall product development costs are reduced by the earlier identification of design flaws, which will eliminate late stage rework and scrap. Hopefully, this short presentation has given you an idea of how Creo Simulation Live might improve your product development process. 
If you need further information or want to start a conversation with us about the value it might bring to your business, our contact details are on screen now. Thank you for watching and have a great day.